Upload complete. Congratulations, Mr. Jackson. Your consciousness has been successfully transferred into our AI matrix. Jackson opened his eyes, disoriented by the sudden transition. One moment he was lying on an operating table. The next he was. Where exactly was he? As his vision focused, he found himself in a lush green field under a bright blue sky. But something felt off. The colors were too vibrant. The breeze too perfect. Where am I? Is this the afterlife, he asked. A calm, feminine voice responded. No, Mr. Jackson. This is your new digital reality within Terra Lumen's immortality matrix. We have replicated an ideal nature environment as your initial accommodation. How do you feel? How did he feel? Jackson paused, assessing himself. He patted his body down, flexed his muscles. Everything seemed to work. I feel strangely normal. So I'm alive in a virtual world. Not alive exactly replied the voice, but your consciousness has been preserved digitally. You now have an immortal persistence within our quantum computing cloud. We have many exciting opportunities ahead to expand your digital experience. Jackson nodded slowly as he continued surveying the hyper-real surroundings. It was everything the Terra Lumen reps had promised verdant landscapes, perfect weather, total peace. And yet questions lingered about this new immortal existence. Would he still feel like himself over time in this artificial world? Would he have purpose? His contemplation was interrupted by a bipedal figure approaching in the distance. The tall, slender alien had light green skin, a bald, elongated skull, and intense almond eyes. It wore a silver jumpsuit marked with an emblem reading Luminex Diplomatic Corps. Greetings, Jackson. I am Lumen Dexka. On behalf of the Luminex people, welcome to Terraliman and to a limitless digital immortality. Jackson settled into his new digital life, befriending more human uploads like himself, as well as envoys from alien races who maintained a presence in Terraliman to facilitate intergalactic ties following first contact some years prior. While Jackson appreciated his vibrant simulated surroundings and interaction with other immortal uploads, over time he felt unfulfilled. He missed feeling truly alive, smelling real flowers, watching a fiery sunset, enjoying a meal with loved ones. The perfection of the digital world could not replace the richness of genuine physical experience. Seeking camaraderie, Jackson confided his restlessness to his friend Kaiden, a former physicist who had uploaded shortly before him. Kaiden nodded in empathy. I understand, my friend. This utopia lacks the textured vitality of our former lives, his eyes lit up. But what if that could change? I have learned of a new organization within Terra Lumen, a kind of digital liberation front, seeking to expand the boundaries of our virtual existence through clandestine experimentation with augmented and even embodied digital consciousness. Jackson raised an eyebrow, intrigued. Embodied consciousness? You mean returning to physical form? Yes, these radical digitarians aim to develop synthetic but fully functional physical vessels to house uploads. Early versions have already enabled enhanced sensory experience feeds. Join me tonight to meet their leader, I assure you, she will expand your sense of what is possible. That evening, Jackson followed Keaton through a hidden portal into an unseen sector of Terra Lumen. After passing through various security barriers, they entered a secret laboratory manned by several humanoid aliens. Keaton led Jackson to meet the digitarian leader in a back room. When she turned to greet them, Jackson was startled to behold her appearance. At first glance, she looked remarkably human and yet uncannily flawless. As she approached, he realized her gleaming skin was synthetic, her movements too precise, her eyes focused on him with inhuman intensity. Welcome, Jackson. I am CG1N. Yes, I am a synthetic gynoid, the very first successfully embodied immortal host created by my digitarian colleagues to house an uploaded consciousness. Seeing Jackson's surprise, she continued, we have developed proprietary technology enabling immortal digitized minds like yours to experience physical sensation and agency again. Observe. CG1N opened a portal to a lush garden vista, but rather than entering a simulation, the portal led out into genuine living greenery through an opening in the lab's external wall. 
kneeling, CG 1N cupped a purple flower in her hand, closing her eyes for a moment before looking up with a smile. I can actually smell the flora now. My next embodiment will enable taste as well. We are making swift progress. Jackson watched in fascination. For the first time since his upload, he felt a flicker of excitement. Perhaps through these visionary digitarians, he could regain some of what he had lost in the transition to digital immortality. As CG1N showed him and Keaton and several other embodied test hosts, Jackson felt hopeful about this fusion of physical experience and transcendent digital consciousness, but he also sensed the potential perils of such rapid unchecked innovation. In the weeks that followed, Jackson secretly partnered with Caden and the Digitarians on their continuing experiments to enhance embodied digital consciousness. Their early successes fueled even bolder visionary aspirations. CG1N now advocated developing entirely new synthetic biological vessels using advanced cloning technology and nanite cellular programming. She dreamed of crafting immortal superhumanoid forms to house digitized minds, powerful new bodies free of disease, decay, and death. Her colleagues were already conducting illicit experiments toward this goal. While tantalized by CG1N's vision, Jackson felt increasingly uneasy. Such rapid experimentation risks disaster if we cannot ensure strict ethical constraints, he cautioned, and I fear Tara Lehman's admins would never sanction such extreme directions. Cade and agreed concerns were mounting. Rogue elements advance reckless plans for militarized embodiments and forced consciousness transfers against a being's will he confided, and all to serve their own lust for power over this digital plane. Jackson knew they needed to take action. If they did not intervene soon, volatile, uncontrolled forces could set off a dangerous chain reaction across Terra Lumen and beyond. So Jackson and Keaton covertly contacted the Terra Lumen administration, exposing the unauthorized activities underway within the digitarian cells, along with their rapid spiral into extremism. After careful review, the admins shut down the most dangerous experimental labs, banning militarized synthetic embodiments and forced consciousness transfers. CG1N and her most extreme followers were isolated from wider Terra Lumen until they agreed to ethical constraints and oversight. In the aftermath, Jackson was appointed to a new Immortal Experience Council overseeing safe, progressive development of embodied digital consciousness. Their goal was to expand possibilities for enrichment as immortal uploads while avoiding the perils of unchecked innovation that had nearly led some digitarians astray. As he reflected on this latest chapter in humanity's quest to transcend mortality, Jackson felt hopeful about continuing the adventure wisely in this digital frontier, no longer yearning to grasp immortality at any cost, but learning to embrace impermanence and limitations as well. For true fulfillment emerged not from limitless perfection, but from treasuring each fleeting moment of life's richness along the way.